Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on linear motion. In this tutorial, we're going to look at an interesting question that I left you guys with in the previous video. I hope you had time to go through it. Now let's quickly look at the question and see what we're being asked to find. The question reads, a hockey player is standing on a frozen pond. When an opposing player skates past with a uniform speed of 12 meters per second. After three seconds, the stationary player makes up his mind to chase his opponent. If he accelerates uniformly at four meters per second squared, how long does it take him to catch his opponent? And, but two, how far has he traveled in that time? Assume the player, uh, the player motion at, the player motion at constant speed. Okay, now how does it, the, or this is supposed to read, Assume the player in motion is moving with a constant speed. So that first, that first player here, we, we are having a, a uniform speed then. Okay, so I, I hope that's, that's what that means. Okay, let's quickly see how we are supposed to work out this question. Okay, now we we'll go through the question one more time, but this time extracting what we've been given. So here we're seeing that we have two hockey players. The first one, the same. A hockey player is standing on a frozen pond. So one player is just standing on the pond, while the other one is already in motion. So standing on a frozen pond, when an opposing player skates past with a uniform speed. So let's say the one who is skating past is the one we're writing this side. So for this one, moving with a uniform speed. So this is uniform speed. I'm going to uh, take it down in this form. So the uniform speed and this value is 12 meters per second. That's the value of the uniform speed. Well, the other one was initially at rest. So u is equals to zero. This part was specified when they say this player was standing on a pond, standing, uh, yeah, standing on the frozen pond. Okay, what else? Three seconds later, the stationary player makes up his mind, makes up his mind to chase his opponent. So after three seconds, this player who was initially at rest decides to chase a friend who was already in motion. So this happens three seconds later. Well, that gives you, it should give you one, one simple thought there. You see, if this one takes off three seconds later than the first one, it means that the time, the time moved for the, this one, as compared to the other one, there will always be a difference of three. So depending on where you're measuring the time from, one value will always be greater than the other by three. Since this one has been moving for way longer, the time for this one will always be greater by three as compared to the time for the other one here. The question is asking for how long does it take him to catch his opponent who they want this one? How long does it take this one to catch the opponent? So since we want to measure time with respect to the one who started to move later, we're going to put T here. But if we put T here, the question then is, what are we going to have on the, on the, on the other one? The one who was initially moving. See, what you're trying to avoid is having different expressions of T, having T1 here and having T2 here. We're trying to avoid that. Instead, we're trying to find the relationship between T1 and T2. So I'm saying, I want to measure time with respect to this one here who was, was initially addressed. So I'm going to say T1 is just equals to T. Now, uh, what would be the expression for T2? Well, I know that T2 will always be greater than T1 by three. So if T1 is T, then T2 has to be T plus three, which makes sense. This player started moving earlier and the second player only started moving three seconds later. So if this player had been moving for 10 seconds, notice that this one would have been moving only for seven seconds. And if this player had been moving for 15 seconds, then this player would have been moving for 18 seconds. So you see that the difference in their time is always that three seconds. This one being greater by three seconds. 
So that is why the expression of time for this one was initially in motion, I'm keeping it as t plus three, while for this other one here who started moving three seconds later, I'm recording it as just t. So it depends with what you're looking at. If you want to look at time based being measured by t2, if I say t2 is the one that I'm taking as t, then t1 here would have been t less by three. So it would have been t minus three. So that in the end, we still maintain that this is greater than this one by three. So with that in mind, just keep that in mind. Just want to um, listen to the question. They want you to measure time with respect to which player. In this case, they want us to measure time with respect to the one who started moving later. That is why we've given the one who's moving later, the uh, notation T, and the one who was initially moving, the notation T plus three. So that the symbol T that we find will be the time for the one who started to move later okay i hope i hope you've got you've got the explanation there if you haven't let me know in the comment section so that i try to see how if i can explain it in a different way okay so with that let me just erase this part let's see what else needs to happen here okay so we've interpreted how the time relates i can even remove this and remove that so that i just have t and t plus two okay so let me write this one here. Okay, yeah, so that's T there. Okay, next up, if I continue reading the question, three seconds later, the session player makes up his mind to chase his opponent. If he accelerates uniformly at four meters per second, who is accelerating the one who started from rest at four meters per second squared? So that's the acceleration. What else? How long does it take him to catch his opponent? Well, they're saying that this player will catch the opponent. See, if two, these two players are going to catch each other, it means that the distance they will cover in the end has to be the same. So the distance they will cover will have to be the same. So because of that, I can put the symbol for distance. This one will cover some distance x, it means that even the first one will have to cover the same distance x. With that in mind, now we can start looking at the equations of motion for each object or for each player. For the first one, it is a little bit easy. Because the player was moving with a uniform speed, constant speed, this means that we are going to use that equation that works with just the uh, in other words, the definition of speed. We don't have acceleration, so our go-to equation is speed is equal to distance over time. So the speed here we're given, so the speed is 12. The distance moved is what we're looking for. We're also looking for it, so we're going to put x there. The time for this one was initially moving, we are taking it as t plus three. From here, we see that if we cross multiply, we get x is equals to 12, multiplying t plus three. We hold on to this equation as equation one. How about for the other player? What is happening? Well, for this one, we have acceleration. So we want to look at what equation we're going to use, but we see that we've got no interest in knowing the final velocity of this object. Instead, we're only relating the initial the time, the acceleration, and the displacement, since we want to know this displacement or the distance. Now, how do we do that? Since we're not interested in the final equation, uh, in the final velocity, we see that the equation that doesn't use final velocity is going to be the second equation. S is equals to ut plus half nt squared. Here, S is for displacement. U is initial velocity, T is time, A is acceleration. Since this object starts from rest, u is zero, this then becomes zero. We now have s is equals to half and t squared. The acceleration we are given in the question, if we go back up, it's four meters per second squared. So this becomes s is equals to half times four times the time. We don't know what time is, but for this, 
For this player, we're just using t to represent time. If we simplify this, we get for s for the distance, we're using x. The distance we're using x, so since we're substitution, substituting, you just put an x there as well. Half of four is going to be two, so we get two t squared. This becomes equation two. So when we compare equation one and equation two, we quickly see that the left-hand sides are equal, meaning that the right-hand sides as well have to be equal. So you can equate them. So we have 12 t plus three has to be equal to two t squared. We group the like terms here, we get two t squared. We just basically just writing this equation in a standard way for a quadratic equation. 12t plus 3. Okay, this is equal to 0. So we quickly distribute the 12 inside, and what we get is going to be 2t squared minus 12t minus 36 is equal to 0. We can simplify this by dividing 2 by 2, and the expression becomes t squared minus 6t minus 18 is equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic equation that we can write using the quadratic formula. So here we're seeing that t will be equal to negative b. We use the quadratic formula plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So here I'm just stating the equation we're going to use. So from here, a is the coefficient of, of t, meaning a is equals to 1. And then b is the coefficient of a is the coefficient of t squared. b is the coefficient of t term. So the coefficient of t is going to be negative 6. So b is equals to negative 6. And lastly, c is the independent term. And in this case, it is negative 18. So this is negative 18. So now we perform the substitution. So t is equal to negative b. So this becomes negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4. a is 1. c is negative 18 over 2 multiplying 1. If we simplify this, the first part becomes positive 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared gives us 36. And then this minus and that minus will give us a positive. And then this, when we, here of course, we're now going to have 4. This is going to be a positive here with the negative and the negative there. We're going to have literally 4 multiplying 18. Okay, so this is over 2. So the square root there, this is going to be 6 plus or minus the square root of 108 over 2. So from here, we're going to drop out the negative, the, the difference. The difference is going to give us a negative value of time, so that is not going to be variable. So we're going to work with 6 plus root 108 over 2, and this is going to give us 8. 0.20 seconds as the value of time. You can try to work out the one with the difference and you see that it will lead you towards a negative value of time. And we're trying to, Tyson's time will always be positive in this case. So we're, we're, we're discarding that value and just going to positive value. Okay, so that is the, the time it takes for the second player to catch the player who was initially in motion. So the question is asking for a number of things. One of them is how long it takes um, the player to catch the opposing player. The second part is how far has he traveled in that time, the distance? Well, we already have an equation for distance. If we go back, equation two, we can use equation two or we can use equation one. The distance is basically x here, or we can use this equation as well to give us the same value. Let's use equation two. So from equation two, okay. So let's use equation two here.
Okay, so if we use equation two, so from equation two, what we have is x is equal to 2t squared. This is from equation two. But we just from seeing that the value of t is 8.20 seconds. So you can make this substitution here so that x is now just 2 multiplying 8.2 squared. And if we do this, we find our value of x as 134 meters. So notice that now we have obtained the distance that, um, that this, the two players would have moved. So again, remember we're using one simple fact here for the two players to, or for the player to catch the friend, it means that the distance that they move will have to be the same. And apart from that, the player who was moving initially, the one who was moving that constant 12 meters per second, will always move three seconds more than the player who started moving a little bit later. So that's a trick that we used here. It's one thing that I think you guys um, will have to try to understand. It's a little bit tricky for, for most students. So we'll try to find another example that we can work out to just help you guys um, understand this. All right, you guys, I think this is as far as we go with this tutorial. So if you've got any questions and a feedback, let me let me know in the in the comment section. You can always get in touch with me if you've got a question that you want me to look at. All right, you guys, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial. This was your tutor.